All right, take your Bible and turn to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 10. I hope that Jesus is all that you need in your life. And if he's not all that you need, then you need to look a little deeper because I tell you, the longer you live and the more you experience in life, what you'll find is that Jesus is all you need in your life. Everything outside of God and everything outside of Jesus is really just superficial. It's just really things that don't matter. It's really just kind of fluff in the world that we live in. There's so many things that we love and enjoy, but they don't last. And I'm so glad that the love of Jesus Christ, it endures forever. Aren't you glad? If you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 10, or Mark chapter 10, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 10 and verse 13, I want to say that we're glad that you chose Liberty Baptist Church to come worship in today, and we're glad you're in the house of God, and we're glad that you came to hear the preaching of the Word of God and the singing of the praises of God, and if we can ever be a help as a church, we want to be. If this is your first time here, we hope you just feel comfortable, and if you don't feel comfortable, you let me know what you need to feel comfortable, we'll make sure we provide that for you. We're thankful for everyone that's here, and we appreciate each one of you that come. I never take it for granted that people come to the house of God. There's a lot of churches. There's a lot of places that you could go worship. And we're just thankful that you chose this place to come. We do. Mark chapter 10, I want you to look at verses 13 through 16. Very familiar passage of scripture. The Bible says, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. He said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you, Lord, thankful for your goodness, thankful for your mercy. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless the message as we preach God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, not to, to ramble or to run on, but God, to present the Word of God to each person that's here. Lord, we pray, God, that you would take your Word and work it into someone's life. Lord, we pray, God, that whatever the need is today, that your Word would speak to that heart, that life, that they would find what they need in you. Lord, I pray for that one, Lord, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that today would be the day that they would make the decision could give their life and their heart to you. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been preaching a sermon series on the family portrait, and we preached the first series and, or the first sermon, and we talked about how that the world has an image that we all try to live up to. I, I joked around about the Christmas card that we all send out to all of our friends and all of our family, letting them know how wonderful our family is. We send this card out, and we always look like the loving father and the great wife and the great children, and we send those cards out, and we all have this image of what a perfect family is. And in the first sermon, I challenged you to look at our families and to say, is our families perfect based on the standard of the world, or are we trying to live, have our families live up to the standard of the Word of God? Then the next Sunday, I preached a message on on the husband, I said, what is the picture perfect husband? Are we trying to live up to the standard of the world? Is there this image that the world puts up and says, hey, this is what Matt Burrell should be as a husband? And then last week we tried to preach on the wives and it's hard for me to be, on, be hard on wives because I have one. And, and Brother Mike Carter said, Preacher, you got the men when it was husband day and you got the men when it was women's day. And I said, well, that's just the way it goes. It all falls to the man, doesn't it? It does. And we preached about that. But I want to preach about something different today. I want to preach about children. How many people here have perfect children? How many people know people who think their children are perfect? I policed for 12 years, and in my policing time, I found out one thing, that nobody's child does anything wrong. I remember going to people's homes and saying, hey, listen, uh, your child was at Walmart, and this guy saw them on, on camera, videotaped them shoplifting. They, they saw it on video camera, and so the security guard came and took your son and took him to the back room, and when he got him in the back room with the other manager there, they said, son, did you steal? And the son, your son said, yes, sir, I did. And he said, well, what did you get? And he said, well, I got these DVDs. And he said, well, would you give them to us? And he pulled them out of his pants and he laid them on the table. And we took pictures of the, of the DVDs and we took pictures of your son. And I'm bringing him here to drop him off at your house. And they've looked me in the face and said, he didn't do that. I said, if he didn't do it, it was a kid that looked a whole lot like him that did it. 
We've, we worked at the alternative school, and, and, and we have a teacher here in the alternative school, and you work as a school resource officer, and you have children that have problems, and they come in, and, and the child gets in trouble, and the child does this, or the child does that. We take them down to the house, and we say, listen, we caught your child doing this. We caught your child doing that. Your child's being suspended for this, or he's being expelled for that. And the parent look you right in the eye and say, my child didn't do that. The teacher just doesn't like him. And everywhere I go, I find that people's children don't cause problems, but it's everybody around them that causes problems. Can I say this to you today? Your kid's as bad and as mean as every child on this world. I've had people in the church before because we have problems with kids on the school ground, on the church grounds, look at me and say, Preacher, my son doesn't lie. I say, He lies so well, he's got you fooled. That's what it is. And I find that in our lives, we look around and everybody says, but preacher, my son didn't do that. My daughter wouldn't do that. I want to say this to you. I don't trust my children, not as far as I can throw them, because I was a child one time, and I know the things that I did, and I know the things that I got away with. And I just want to say this to you. There are no perfect children in this world. And if somebody comes to you that's an adult and said, this is way off subject, But if an adult comes to you and says, hey, your child was doing such and such, you ought not jump to your child's defense. You ought to trust an adult that would come to you is telling you for your own good, don't be blind, don't be dumb, do something about your child's behavior. Boy, it's quiet. I know it's quiet. I see it all the time. But preacher, you just don't understand. That guy don't like my daughter. Your daughter's a brat. That's the problem. I want to say that. I can't say that's what I want to say, but I can't say that. Preacher, they just don't do those types of things. Okay, all right. But I want to say this to you as we get in the message that even though we don't have perfect children, I want you to know that every child is a gift from God. You know, the Bible says this, that low children are inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And I want you to know this today. If you have a child, they are a direct gift from God. Do you hear me? You say, my child's mean and ugly and hateful. They've been in all kinds of trouble. They're still a gift from God. Do you hear me? I don't care what your child's done, what their background is, where they're at right now, what they're involved in. They are a gift from God Almighty. Don't ever doubt that in your life. And I want Liberty Baptist Church to understand this morning that children are a gift from God the same way as a gift from me to my son on Christmas morning. Me and Brad, can I say something that's going to be politically not popular? I'm going to say it. You know I love you, and you know I love people, and I don't want you to think this in a bad way. But me and Brad Hankey were riding down the road uh, the other day. We went to speak at a school in Gastonia. We were coming back down the road, and I rode by this church, and there was a field in this church that had a great big banner, and the great big banner said that 3,300 children were aborted in America today. And they had a little flag in that field for all 3,300 of those children. And when I stood and I looked on that field, you know what I saw? The gifts of God being thrown away. You know, when somebody says, but preacher, I didn't plan this child. I didn't expect this child. I didn't want this child. It's not time for me to have a child. I want you to know that it, no, there is no mistakes with children, that every child is a gift from God given to you. So, but preacher, this is a stepchild. He's not even my kid. He is a gift from God to you. To Richard, that child, I don't even know him, and now I'm trying to raise him. He was dropped off at my doorstep. Listen to me. From the hand of God, that child is a gift from Almighty God in your life. Amen. Boy, you ought to know this, and I want you to get this, that there's nothing more precious than children in God's sight. Amen. Boy, when I look around the world, I see how children are treated. And I want you to see this and know this, that God's not for that. God loves every child, every boy, every girl, no matter where they're born, no matter how they're raised, no matter how they grow up. God loves children. And boy, I tell you, Liberty Baptist Church ought to love children. Man, we were down in Costa Rica a couple years ago. Boy, some of us that went down there, remember, there's nothing like seeing orphans whose parents just don't want them. Just drop them off at the doorstep as a young child and say, I'm not going to raise this child. I don't have time for this child. I don't have room for this child. Here, you do something with this child. It's just like taking a gift from God and giving it away. Friend, I want to say this to you, that if you have children in your life and grandchildren in your life, they are direct gifts from God placed in your hand, and God wants you to honor those children. Boy, today I want to preach to you what perfect children are in the eyes of God. 
What are perfect children in the eyes of God? And last week, I forgot to tell you, but next week, I'm going to preach on, per on, pitch on perfect parents next week. So if you're missing this lesson, next lesson will be on the adults. Perfect parents. What is a perfect parent? We're going to show you what God says about that. But today, what are perfect children? I want you to notice what he says. I want you to look at this in verse 13. We see the first thing that perfect children are. The Bible says, and they brought young children to him. Now, who is that him? That's Jesus Christ. Now, he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought him. I want to say this to you quickly, and you get this, that picture-perfect children are evangelized. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? I mean that perfect children are reached for Jesus Christ. Perfect children are brought to Jesus Christ to meet the Savior, to know the Savior, and to experience the Savior in their life. I want you to notice what it says, and they brought young children to Jesus. When they brought children to Jesus, you know what they were saying? Hey, young person, this guy, you need to know him in your life. Let me introduce you to a great teacher. His name's Jesus. Let me introduce you to a great man. This is Jesus. He'll make a difference in your life. And I want to say this to you, that every child that we run into, our goal and our obligation is to introduce that child to Jesus Christ in their life. I challenge parents every day to believe this and to know this, that your sole responsibility in your life is to lead your children to Jesus Christ. Children, God wants, you, God wants you to raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. God wants us to reach every child that we can. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I want you to understand this and get this, that our job is to expose our children to the gospel of Jesus Christ in every way we can. Our job is to take our children of this church in this area and put them under the preaching of the Word of God and put them under the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our job should be to tell every child that they need Jesus Christ in their life. And I want you to notice this, parents. You're going to see this. It says they brought them. You know, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't say that they sent them to Jesus, does it? It doesn't say that they hired somebody to take them down there to see Jesus, did it? It said they brought them to see Jesus. Let me say this, parents. Your children will not come to Jesus Christ if you haven't come yourself. Amen. If you don't think it's important enough to come down to the house of God and listen to the preaching and the gospel of Jesus Christ, your children will never think it's important to come. You ought to show your child that Jesus is important by demonstrating in your life that the things of God are important. Listen, I just want to say this to you, that your children need Jesus, but until you have Jesus, until you're sold out to Jesus, they'll never come to Jesus because if daddy's not for it, if mama's not for it, children won't be for it. You know what football lovers raise their kids to be? Football lovers. My children like to watch football. You know why? Because dad likes to watch football. People that watch racing, you know what their kids grow up to watch? Racing, boy. They want to go to the races, watch people drive around the circle. And I like racing, praise the Lord. You know what people that grow up eating beef like? Their kids like beef. You ever met somebody that don't like spaghetti? They, they got mental problems. It, that's all right. They got problems, but they're all right. They grew up in a house that probably didn't eat spaghetti. Yeah. And let me tell you something, kids that grow up in a house that don't worship God, you know what they don't do when they get older? They don't worship God. And let me say this to you, parent, and I'm not supposed to be preaching on the parents today, but I'll just say it like this. If he's not real to you, he will never be real to them in their lives. Because let me tell you something, your kids can spot a phony. I'm going to get real I'm going to get real. If you're out living your life in an opposite way of Jesus Christ on Friday and Saturday night, don't even tell your kids about Jesus because you know what they think about you? They won't say it, but they'll think you're a hypocrite. Boy, it gets quiet. That's all right, though. I love you. When Paul was talking to Timothy, he told Timothy this. He said, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. And I want to say this to you, that your children from a child, they need to hear the Word of God. They need to be exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They need Jesus in their life. Let me tell you what they need. They need you to drag them to church. I'm just going to get, here we go. If you live in my house and you don't have fur, <laughs> do 
You're going to come to church on Sunday morning. If you're going to eat at my table, you're going to church on Sunday morning. But preacher, he's 20. Throw him out of the house. If you need help, we got men that will help you move his stuff out. So preacher, he doesn't like going to church. He'll get over it. So, but preacher, you know, I don't, Jesus said, suffer them to come unto me. And let me tell you something, parents, if you don't bring them to Jesus, they'll not come to Jesus Christ. Boy, mm. your kids need vacation Bible school. Just drag them down here, put them in it, make them go. Preacher, they just don't really get, you know, they just, who's in charge, you or them? My kids don't get into medicine when they're sick, but we don't say, well, don't worry about it, forget about that. Your kids need Jesus all the time. You know how much they need? They need a lot. A preacher told me one time, said, Preacher, I grew up with a drug problem. My dad drugged me to church on Sunday morning, <laughs> drugged me to church on Sunday night, drugged me down there on Wednesday night. And, hey, if you grew up like me, you were at missionary meeting on Tuesday night and cottage prayer meeting on Monday night. And well, on Thursday night, if we didn't have nothing, we just went down to church to see what was going on. I mean, we did something in the house of God. You know what your children need? They need Jesus Christ in their life. They need to be saved by the grace of God. And they need you to point them to Jesus all the time. Do you hear me? That's what they need. I'm fired up about this message because we got all these goals, what we want our children to be. Christian ought to be the number one goal. Do you hear me? Saved by the grace of God, not on their way to hell, ought to be on the top of your list in your life. Yeah, but preacher, he's got a great job. Who cares about his job? Is he going to heaven when he dies, yes or no? Let me tell you something. Saved beats everything else. Your children saved and you can sleep at night knowing when they wrecked that car that they'd stand in front of him. You know when your kids get grown and they're driving, you worry. You know what I'm talking about? I worry about them getting hurt physically, but I don't want to have to worry about where they'll be if they don't make it home that night. Why don't I just keep you awake at night if you don't know? You ought to just call out to God if you don't know. It ought to be a big deal to us that our children come to Jesus Christ. You wake up in the morning, you know what ought to be on your mind if you've got a lost child? God save them. Mm. I just tell you, sometimes, boy, a preacher goes through and he preaches funeral and he preaches funeral and he preaches funeral. And you know what he learns? That people are going to die and not all of them are going to be saved. And you're going to stand and look at them knowing that they're not saved. Somebody's heart's broke over it. Somebody can't sleep because of it. Let me tell you something. Your prayer, your goal, your aspirations, I'll be at your children know Jesus Christ. You say, well, preacher, I don't have any kids. Find somebody that does and help them reach them for Jesus. There's a, a survey done. It says that 19 out of 25 people that know Jesus... They come to Jesus before they were 25 years old. You know, at 25, one in 10,000 people will come to Jesus. At 35, one in 50,000 will come to Jesus. One in four, at 45 years old, one in 200,000 will come to Jesus Christ. At 35, one in 300,000, at 55, I'm sorry, 300,000. And when a person reaches the age of 75 years old, it's reported one in 700,000 will come to Jesus. See, preacher, those numbers might be messed up. They might be a little bit, but I'll say this. We need to reach our children while they're young. Amen. Say they're all 5,000. You want your kid to fall in that group? I don't. You want somebody in this church's child to fall in that group? I don't. You realize I went back there to get some batteries for my mic because I'm running really behind it. Miss Sandy Hankey said there's 55 kids in here today. Can I just say... You're not 55 souls hearing the gospel in that room right now. You can't put a price on that. I think about them little people back there in that little room. It's Tim's son with his little hat on this morning. He had so heavy his head hold down like this. <laughs> he's hearing the gospel right now and he's not even old enough to understand it. Can I say this to you, boy? You can't put a price on that. We got a family in church that'll have a baby tonight and go in to be, have it be induced tonight. 
That's exciting, isn't it? Amen. And we got a baby over here that's so little, a little four-pound hand. I could just squeeze her, man, like a football boy, just little. Be dedicating little Keith, a year old today, today. Amen. Hearing the gospel as a young age. Can't put a price on that. Well, if I don't hurry, though, we ain't going to dedicate nobody today. Let's go. <coughs> I want you to notice in verse 15, notice the second thing. Sure. Amen. 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 Twenty five. Twenty five years old, come to Christ. Look at verse fifteen. I want you to see this. I want you to get this. Verse fifteen says, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. I want to say that picture perfect children are evangelized, they come to Jesus Christ. But notice what he said, Verily I say unto you. And I want you to get this that children, that perfect child that God wants, not only they reach for Jesus Christ, but they are ed educated at the feet of Jesus Christ. When Jesus began to speak, those children were close enough, they could hear what he said, they could hear what he was talking about. And I want you to know this that our children need to be raised and educated about. Jesus Christ in their life. We all have these desires to have 4.0 students and we want everybody to go to college and get a scholarship and go on to have great jobs. We want them to know about the things of the world. We want them to know about the things of society. But I want to say this to you, that we have a responsibility not only to reach our children for Jesus Christ, but to educate them about the things of this word right here. You ought to just wear your children out about the things of God. You ought to tell them about Jesus Christ. You ought to explain to them who Jesus is. You ought to preach to them the word of God. They ought to get tired of hearing about the words of God. When you're raising your children, you know what? And this ain't on parenting. This is just on just general children. Can I say this to you? That when your children are young, they do what you do because they have to. When they leave your home, they will do what they believe they should do. Let me tell you something. You teach them about this book. Don't make it be your rule. Make it God's rule. You hear me? Make it God's rule in their life. Tell them this is what God wants. This is what God thinks. God loves you, and you ought to love God, and you ought to serve God, and you ought to go down to the house of God. You ought to live for God, not because I want you to, son, because God wants you to. That's what you ought to do. We ought to educate our children. Let me tell you something. You ought to bring your, I'm going to get political, I'm going to get something that's not going to be happy either, but I'm going to do it again. It's not popular, but I love everybody here. Your kids are wonderful gifts from God, but you don't go to church where they want to go to church at. People tell me sometimes, well, preacher, we go down here to this church, and I really don't get anything out of it, but I go because Sally just loves it. And if you've got a Sally in here, I'm not talking about your Sally, okay? <laughs> I say, that's great, but let me ask you this. What if they went to a school where they didn't learn anything, but they just loved it to death? Would you keep sending them? You better put them under something you know works. Preacher, I just don't agree with that preacher's this or that preacher's that, and I really don't like that, this and that. Then your kid ought not be there. Your job is to teach your child to graze up, to know and to learn the Word of God. And if they're not learning it where they're going, if they're not going down there, listen, I'm for programs, and Lord knows we do all things for children. Packed out up here, Wednesday nights packed up here. Josh works to death in the youth. Brother Jeremy works. We want our children to enjoy it. But I want to say this to you. At the end of the day, it's not about enjoying. It's about learning about Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is hurts too, but some of us don't go to Sunday school because they say, Preacher, it's just early. I mean, yeah, 10's just awful, isn't it? Just early. What time do you go to work? About 5.30. Yeah, that's er 10's early, early. <laughs> Preacher, i just be honest with you. I don't really like that Sunday school teacher. They don't like my child. They pick on them. They don't pick on your kid. They come down here early to teach your child the Word of God. I just don't like them. They're just, just, that's personality. Get over that. Get over that personality thing. Do you want your child to learn about God or not? I do send him. I'm glad two of you agree with me. Paul said this. Paul said, fathers, promote not your children to wrath. He said, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. You know what he was saying? He said, you ought to teach them something about Jesus. They ought to know something about God. They ought to know something about the Word of God. Your child not get a Bible and not know where anything's at in it. You know, here's what we could do. You could take your child and sit them down and say, okay, son, turn over to the book of Isaiah. 
If they can't find it, you got work to do. Not popular, but we're preaching it. Moses said this, And the things which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You know what we do? And I love to do it because I'm a guy I love to go out in the yard and throw football with Andy. I like that. I can't throw, but I like to. I like throwing it with him. I love to throw it, you know, and all that, you know. My daughter Gracie wants to tumble. I'm not so much into that. You know what I need to diligently teach them, though? Got to be quick. Look at verse 14. We'll get, get done. Well, I mean, I got piles to preach and no time to preach it in. I, I could preach this message four weeks in a row and not get it all. That's how important our children are to God. That's how important our children are to this church. That's how important our children are. Our children are the next generation, not just for our country, but for God Almighty. They're the next preachers. They're the next missionaries. They're the next people to stand up and proclaim the Word of God. That's how important they are. Our way of worship will not be heard of. This kind of preaching that I stand and do will go away if somebody don't come up behind us and preach the Word of God without fear and favor of man. Did you look at verse 14, what it says? But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and he said, Suffer the little ones to come unto me, and forbid them not. Perfect children are encouraged for God. He said, Don't you tell a child, don't you come to me. You know, the Bible says it like this, and Jesus is very plain in the book of Matthew. He said, Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, he said, It were better for a millstone to be hanged about his neck and that he were cast into the sea. You know what God thinks about people that try to push children from Jesus Christ? He said, That joker ought to have a big millstone tied up around his neck and they ought to cast him out in the ocean and let him drown because nobody ought to hinder God's children from serving him. Let me tell you something. God's not for people that offend children, by the way. God's people ought not be for it either. I want you to get this real quick. I, I got to go. If your kid wants to be a preacher, you know what you ought to do? You ought to say, son, you ought to preach, man. You go do it. Hey, man, you go preach, brother. Go do it. And you ought to say, hey, you get up and go preach. That's what you ought to do. If God wants you to be a preacher, you ought to be a preacher, son. Your child comes to you and says, son, dad, I'm being called to Africa. God wants me to be on the mission field. You know what our first thought is? That's stupid, son. What do they make a year, like 20, 30,000 a year? I mean, how are you going to pay for your family? How's your kids going to eat? I mean, how are you going to buy that new car? How are you going to get that new house? I mean, you go off to be a missionary. There's no money in that. You know what God said? Raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We ought to admonish our children. Hey, son, if God wants you to do something for him, you go do it with everything in you. Be the best you can be. Do the most you can do. Serve God with everything in you, son or daughter. Daughter says, Dad, I'm, I really like this guy, but man, you know, he's a missionary. He's a, he's a preacher. We're going to have to move to Kalamazoo. If that's where Jesus wants you, get on out of here. Hard for us to do, though. It's hard for you to stand up and encourage your kids to serve God because we want them to serve what we want. What does God want for their life? Well, you know, nothing's more precious than a child giving their life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to close with this because I, I don't really have a place to stop this morning. But you know D.L. Moody, some of you might know who he is, some of you might not. D.L. Moody is one of, the, one of the greatest preachers and evangelists that ever lived. And he preached all over America and, boy, the Christianity would not be what it is today had D.L. Moody not preached. D.L. Moody went out and preached a great big meeting and he come back home and he walked in and the guy said, hey, uh, preacher, how'd the meeting go? Everything good? He said, yeah, he said, we had two and a half conversions. And somebody said, oh, what, uh, would you have two adults saved and a child? He said, no, no, we had two children and an adult saved. He said, you understand that when a child gets saved and gives their life to Jesus, they have a lifetime to serve God. But when an adult gives their life to Jesus, they've just got whatever time's left. And I'll tell you, a full conversion is when we can get them at the cradle. When we can get them when they're four and five. When we baptize them up here, you can't hardly see their heads out the glass. That's a full life to go out 
You know, we ought not want our kids to go out and make the same mistakes we made. Live the life that we lived. They ought not know some of the stuff that you know. They ought not experience the things that you've experienced. But they ought to just grow up like little Samuel in the temple when his mama gave him back because she loved him. And she said, little Samuel, I told God if you'd give me you, that I'd give you back. And I know you don't understand it. You're four years old, and here's your little outfit, and here's your little thing, and you're going to have to go down and serve in the temple because I told God that I'd give you back to him if you gave him to me. The Bible says that Samuel grew up to be one of the greatest prophets that Israel ever knew because he, all he ever knew was service to God. Amen. And it's possible to take your child in this society that we live in today and raise them up or when they get to an age, they say, listen, we don't do that, we don't believe that, we don't practice that because we're Christians saved by the grace of God. Amen. You say, preacher, those days are gone. Those days aren't gone. Those days aren't gone. We've got to decide that we want our children to serve God. So, preacher, my kids are grown. You got grandkids? Granddaddy's a huge influence. Grandma's a huge influence. Well, you just tell them about Jesus. Son, what you going to do when you grow up? I think about being a preacher. Son, you just keep on preaching then. I'll tell you something. When that five-year-old tells us sometimes, I'm going to be a preacher when I grow up, and they tell me that sometimes, and I think I just hope the world don't steal that from you, son. Hope the world don't take that from you. Don't find something greater than God. Just serve him. You know, Jesus said, suffer little children. He said, you bring them to me. He said, I want those children. Listen, we'll never have perfect children. But we can have saved children that are serving God and that we're encouraging to do more for Jesus than we've ever done. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you, Lord, and we're thankful, God, for every child that's in this room. Lord, every child that's in the nursery, every child that's in kids' world, God, I am just so thankful, Lord, that you put us, entrusted us with all the children. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you've given them to us, but Lord, I ask you, God, to help us to give them to you. Help us, God, to reach our children for you. Help us make a difference in their life. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.